Many greens, friends of the Grummels. Thanks for tuning in to Shinies and Lucky Deuce. My name is Vasky, and I'm here with Locke. And today we'll be presenting our second Battle for Azeroth Fairy. And if you're a fan of speculation, have we got the Lucky Do for you. Welcome, friends. Today we will be discussing one of Legion's most talked about quotes. Five keys to open our way, five torches to light our path. Now, you might remember this whisper from Ilganoth. The old god corrupted World Tree within the Emerald Nightmare Raid. And you may be familiar with a couple theories that have been going around the community. Could this whisper be referring to the five dragon aspects? Or perhaps the World Trees? <laughs> well, we're actually not here to talk about those ideas today. There's definitely a good chance that the whispers could be referencing trees or dragons. But today, we'd like to propose a third option. And that option involves paladins, and Naru, and some really, really old lore. So, if that seems like the kind of thing you'd be into, let's start from the top. This theory dates back to just a few weeks ago when I was reading up on the Scarlet Crusade for our lore podcast. I was researching Sidon Datherhan, one of the five original paladins of the Silver Hand, and, well... Well, let's say I fell down a rabbit hole. And that was one hell of a rabbit hole. So, you see, our cheeky little friend Chronicle Volume 2 has actually expanded on the original lore of the founding of the Order of the Silver Hand. And it's really not being talked about enough. And so, hopefully, what we've stumbled upon will blow your frickin' minds. So, let's start off with the five paladins who founded the Knights of the Silver Hand. Most people would know them at least by name, but bear with me for a quick second while I sum up each of their roles. Okay, so first we've got High Exarch Torellin, who's currently the Commander General of the Army of the Light, and who's currently the last living Paladin of the original Five. High Lord Tyrion Fordring, who is the Supreme Commander of the Argon Crusade and wielder of the Ashbringer, before dying from injuries sustained on a broken shore. Moving on to Uther the Lightbringer, who was well known as the leader of the Silver Hand and Prince Arthur's Manifold's mentor. As we all know, Death Knight Arthur goes on to portray his superior and absorbs his soul into Frostborn. Up next, we have Gavinrad the Dyer, a knight from Stormwind, under the command of Anduin Lothar. He was tasked with guarding the Anderhol Cemetery in Sorrow Hill, where Kelthasad was buried at the time. He was also slain by Death Knight Arthas, who had come to collect Kalthazard's remains. And lastly, Sidon Dathrahan, a knight of Lordaeron who was killed by Dreadlord Balnazar, who went on to possess Dathrahan's body and became the High Lord of the Scarlet Crusade. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. As the story goes, the Archbishop of the Church of the Holy Light, Alonzus Fall, journeyed far and wide to seek out these five men. He was looking for people who were pious, who he believed could become the living embodiments of the five facets of the Holy Light. When they became ordained as the first paladins by Archbishop Alonzo's Fall and founded the Silver Hand, each of them was given an ancient librum as old as the Church of the Holy Light itself. They vowed to always embody these powers of the five librums. General Turalian has the librum of protection. Uther Lightbringer was given the Librum of Justice. Gavin Rad the Dyer took the Librum of Compassion. And then High Lord Tyrion took the Librum of Retribution. And last of all, Sidon Dathrohan had the Librum of Holiness. So we have five ancient Librums given to the original five paladins who were charged with not just upholding the virtues of the light, but to physically embody these virtues. That sounds a bit sketchy, doesn't it? Especially so when you consider that each of these paladins have been targeted directly by the old gods, either through the Lich King or through the Nathrism. And, well, what have I told you? It's going to get even more sketchier. Q Chronicle Volume 2. Okay, so everything we've said so far, you may be vaguely familiar with because this is all lore that started back in Warcraft 2 and has been carried through all the way to the current of Legion. But what 
of some of you may, may be unaware of is the additional tidbits provided on pages 126 and 154 of Chronicle Volume 2. It's within these pages that we learn the story of an all-new character, Moraldar. All of us here at Chinese and Lucky Doos really know a lot about the human lore, and we're incredibly shocked to find out that such an important character was introduced in this manner. She's never been mentioned before in lore, apart from the few paragraphs in Chronicle, and Lake Moraldar in Eastern Plaguelands. This isn't the first time that Chronicle has dropped something of massive importance in passing. Yeah, as it turns out, Moraldar was a renowned warrior back in the Troll Wars, 2,800 years before the Dark Portal. She was the sister of Lord Dane, a prominent general of the northern human tribes of Tirisville. And it was thanks to Lord Ain's righteous sacrifice that the humans of Arathor, alongside the High Elves, ended up defeating the Amani Trolls and founding the Kingdom of Strom. Lord Ain had led 500 men to their deaths, but their sacrifice was venerated for millennia to come as an act of pure selflessness. I highly recommend you look up the details of Lord Ain's story in Chronicle Volume 1 if it's unfamiliar to you, but for now, let's focus on his sister. So, Lordane's death affected his sister, Mereldar, so strongly that she dedicated the rest of her life to caring for fellow veterans. She began having visions of the Naru, though. In her dreams, she saw five strange inhuman forms thrumming with holy power. They filled her mind with the wisdom of holiness, protection, justice, retribution, and compassion. The exact same five virtues carried by our five paladins librums. Now, it goes to say that when she put her wordless teachings into practice, power would flow through her. The patients under her care would see her wounds disappear and their illnesses completely vanish. Yeah, Merelda met with other humans who reported having similar visions, and together they codified the radiant wisdom into written word. And centuries later, the Church of the Holy Light was formed based off these same teachings. So our story has come full circle. We have known for over a decade that Archbishop Alonzus Fowl, the leader of the church, was in possession of these ancient librums. But it's only now coming out that these ancient codices were transcriptions of Naru teachings. Now, there's also a very short passage from page 142 of Chronicle Volume 1, which states that though they did not know it, the early human priest has communicated with the Naru of the Great Dark Beyond, who had guided their hearts and introduced them to the Holy Light. I mean, could it be that these five Naru are the original Naru Prime? I mean, how crazy would it be if Zero wrote the Librum of Protection so long ago, which was then given to Turalyon, only for him to eventually lead her army of the light? After all, Light's heart contained a projection of Turalyon specifically. And if this is true, it can put a whole new spin on why it unlocked the Tears of the Loon. Right, so it unlocked one of the five Titan Keepers artifacts like a key. Five keys to open our way, five torches to light our path. Could it be then that these paladins and the five Nauru they are bound to could be the keys to unlocking other Titan artifacts and perhaps even Titan prisons? Or what if the four pillars of creation simply did not need unlocking because the associated paladins and their Nauru had already perished? Zira did say she was the last of her kind. And if that's true, what does that mean for Turalyon? Being the last of his order alive? I mean, after all, players seem to be really obsessed with the idea that Turalyon might die in BFA. There must be some significance to the last living embodiment of the light's virtues dying. Could that be the last of the five torches going out? And then ushering in the void to us? Is this a completion of the long circle we've heard so much about? I mean, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where this goes seeing as Uther's tomb was just redone in the beta, and not to mention all the old human lore being brought to the surface with Kali of Menethil and Lordaeron. But on that note, we will like to leave you with this quote from Chronicle. To the Alliance, the Paladins were more than just weapons. No matter how dire times became, the Paladins would serve as light in the darkness. 
and as beacons of hope to guide the Alliance. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope we've left you with something to think about. Be sure to leave a comment if you think this idea has some merit or if you think we're just playing crazy. We do have a Discord where we discuss our theories and we'd love for you to check it out. Link is in the description. Have a wonderful day and may your feet find good trails. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.